just just uh, the the lineage keeps keeps on going, and it just it's just amazing how God God works. Um, sometimes, like I said, we make promises. Uh, I think that people make every Saturday people make a promise uh, at churches and country clubs to uh, to till death to us part, and yet we, over fifty percent of the people end up in divorce. Uh, we also find uh, when we're baptized, we made a promise. We pray, made a promise to try to live a selfless life like Jesus lived, to live a life like Jesus lived. But yet, oftentimes we fall short. I think there's many reasons why people uh, fall away later on in their lives. But I do think, I do think that uh, one possible reason is because they come to have the attitude of what can God do for me rather than what can I do for God? When I was a lot younger, John F. Kennedy said something like that, except about our country. Ask not what you can do for your country, but I mean, ask not what the country can do for you, but what you can do for your country. And I probably massacred that, but that's the gist. And I think that a lot of times people go into baptism with the joy and the, and they should, with the joy and the exhilaration of God washing away their sins. That they can turn over a new leaf and start a new life with Christ that's heavenward bound. And yet, yet somewhere along the way, when times start to get tough and things don't go right and it doesn't seem like anybody is on their side, including God, um, they they give up. They give up. I guess the point is that if 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 even our baptism started out that way as to what God can do for us, it needs to develop into what can I do for God. Here, Hannah was going going to show her faithfulness, and that's what our really our our lesson is today: faithfulness. Uh, she lived faithfully, she didn't give up, and yet she gave back. She gave back. A sacrifice that, I mean, I, I, it would be very tough for, for me to give up one of my children and just say, here, you take my child and uh, you raise him up for God. That would be a tough thing to do. This is what she promised, and this is what she, what she went through with. To Hannah, the reason for, the child, for this child was not to bring her joy, but to bring God glory. This child was an extension of her faithfulness. And I believe that. I, I believe that. And as you read chapter 2 in 1 Samuel, you'll read her prayer um, and you'll realize how much love and honor she was giving to God and how she was recognizing the fact of who God was in her life. I also think if we just if we want to display our faithfulness, not only is it keeping our promises and following through with them, but it's being thankful. What do you think about that? Being thankful. I think a lot of times we pray and we pray and we pray, but then, and actually God answers our prayers and does it does actually what we like for him to do, and uh, uh, then we don't thank him. Then we don't thank him. I think part of that, part of that uh, uh, asking God for something and then eventually receiving something, I think, that we have to realize how thankfulness goes along with faithfulness. Actually, it recognizes the fact that God did it, that God helped us in this, that his providential care took care of us. Um, and um, 
I think that that's, that's part of that faithfulness. Uh, I know that there, there's been times where I prayed to God for something, prayed to God for something, and then it happened. And then I said, well, that's great. You know, uh, thank you, God. But I, I think that... Uh, I think that we need to think about just how much God blesses us and how we should be thankful. And I think that's part of our faithfulness. Part of being faithful is being thankful. Part of being thankful. Uh, Vinny, I hope I don't uh, embarrass you, but you're hard to be embarrassed anyway, don't you? Yeah. There you go. There you go. Vinny, Vinny came into Wednesday night class the other night, and, and he, he says, hey, man, I look great. He goes, I saw the first pictures. You know, and uh, he did. He looked great compared to what he looked the other night when he fell and, and just gashed open his face um, and uh, his nose and all kinds of things. And, and, and you know what he came and told me? What do you think he told me? Did you know if I had fell and hit it hit just a little bit higher, I'd be dead. I'd be dead. Now, as bad as he looked, <laughs> as bad as he looked, then he said, you know, thank you, God, for at least Accepting my clumsiness. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Accepting my accident. And then realizing that, you know, two inches higher than that, and he very well could have been dead. Um, being thankful. Being thankful. A lot of times we just slide right across being thankful. And I'll tell you what. It is, it is a, a very exhilarating thing to be thankful. I'm glad that God blesses us. I am. I'm glad, and I know he does every, each and every day. But I'm thankful for that, that he does bless us. That he does look down over us, even in the toughest of times. And we go through those times, that's for sure. It says in 1 Samuel 1.20, it came about in, in due time after Hannah had conceived that she gave birth to a son, and she named him Samuel, saying, because I have asked him of the Lord. You know, sometimes we, we say that, that our children are a gift from God. You ever heard of that? Our children are a gift from God. And if you want to go to an example where this really, 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 really says that Hannah received a son. And she felt it was a gift from God. And she knew it was a gift from God. And she acknowledged that fact. Uh, children are a gift from God. We're quick to ask God for the things we desire, but we are... But are we as quick to thank him for the gifts once we receive them? Our thankfulness is a measure of faithfulness. Okay. I think displaying our faithfulness can also be through diligence. 1 Samuel 1, 21 and 22 says, Then the, the man Ilkadai went up with all his household to offer to the Lord the yearly sacrifice and pay his vow. But Hannah did not go up. For she said to her husband, I will not go up until the child is weaned. Then I will bring him that he may appear before the Lord and say, there, there forever. She was acknowledging the fact that, that as soon as her child was going to be weaned, that she was going to give him to the priests and to the priesthood so that he could be trained and uh, we know what kind of man he turned out to be, a well-respected man of God, a man that anointed David, uh, a man that was considered a godly man all of his life. Um, but yet, we yet 
she fulfilled her promise. And through her diligence, through her, through her joy of having a child, she kept her promise. She kept her promise. You know, although this chapter is not specifically a chapter on parenting, there is an undeniable lesson in the story. Our faithfulness as, as, as a Christian is dependent on our faithfulness as parents. And as parents, we need to be aware of that, uh, the obligation that we have. That they, if they are a gift from God, then we should probably treat them as such. Um, are we diligent in giving the gifts God gives us back to him? The, the gift may be a child and uh, an ability and financial means or physical health, but God expects us to be diligent in the care and nurturing of those gifts. Do we look at our children as someone, some one or, or individuals who we need to be, and it's a gift from God, we need to be thankful for that and, be, and nurture those children in such a way that they will be godly. Displaying, displaying faithfulness uh, uh, means following through. Uh, 1 Samuel 1, 24 and 28, and 28 says, Now when she had weaned him, she took him up with her, although the child was young. Uh, she said, I have, all, I have also dedicated him to the Lord as long as he lives. He is dedicated to the Lord. That must have been a tough situation. If she wasn't crying, I don't know why, because uh, she, this was, she had raised this child, for, weaned him three years, and then she gave him to the Lord. Why did she give him to the Lord? Because, well, I'll ask you, why do you think she gave him to the Lord? What do you think? How could someone be so... have such an attitude to be able to give their kid away. Why did she do it? Anybody? Anybody? Pardon me? She was keeping her word, okay? Okay? I, Carol, I know what you're saying. I can't. I, uh, yes. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. Tough. I think I, I, I think you all have good points. Um, I, I I think that uh, I think that that's this is when, when her her promise was one thing. Her following through with that promise seals the deal. Really says a lot for Hannah. Really says a lot for this woman of God. Really, really inspires us to study. Hannah and be in the scriptures for us to look at because she does something that I think would be tough I think would be tough but she prayed to God for this she prayed to God I think a lot of us may pray for children but we don't pray to give them away after that <laughs> we, we don't uh, we, we may pray for it but she specifically prayed to God and said, God, I'll, you know, he will be yours. He will be yours. Sure.
Does that remind you of Sarah? <laughs> yeah. 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 That's right And you know, you know, I can I can go along with that analogy until she follows through with the promise. Well, there's the whole key. She follows through with it. And she says, you know, and, and so then it becomes a you know, she goes back home, she goes to the present, she is now like God remembers her as the one who hated, and now she has a son. And now she has a daughter. And she has the opportunity if she does go to God. Well, she said because she was going to want to wait till the child was weaned, and I, and that that would be that would be tough for the the priesthood to, you know, take on take take on the child take on the child before it was weaned. Well, Benny. That's right, Val. That that was according to law. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's why. That's why they. That's why I think they make the assumption that the child was three years old. <coughs> Number six, Norma says. Numbers chapter six. Mm -hmm. Chances are uh, we won't face this situation. Most of us will never have to give up a child for God, but we may be called to give up something else. Um, and that's what it means to be faithful. Sometimes with all that God has given us, we may be put in a situation where we may have to give up. It may mean loving someone who isn't easy to love. It may be simply mean giving up something you want to do for something you need to do for the kingdom. But it's a matter of following through with our faith, following through with our promise to God, and that's faithfulness. Yes. Uh-huh. Hmm. 
as defined in biblical terms, is that, you know, it, I mean. I guess. Oh, right, right. Do, do you think a promise and a vow are different? It seems as though it was much more important yeah. when you made a vow. It seems that way. Um, probably the analogy for us, and, and I think that let your yeses be yeses and your nays be nays. I mean, I think that's just telling the truth. If I tell somebody I'm going to do something, and I say, yes, I'm going to do it, then I will try my very best to try to do that. I think, well, I, would, I think most people would consider it a promise. Most people consider that a promise. Um, and, and I think that makes it very clear because there was, uh, there was uh, not telling the truth has been, telling lies has been prevalent all the way from the very beginning of time. It's no better today than it was then. We just have more people lying because we have more people. Um, but I, I think that as Christians, I think that we really need to, we say that we're going to do something. We should try our very best to do something. Will we go to hell if we don't do it? I don't think so. But we, we need to try our very best to, to do what we say we're going to do. And that, and that makes us more credible. You know, it makes, you know, I can, de you've heard this before. I can depend on that person. If I ask them to do something, it'll get done. Um, and I think, I think that's the kind of people that we want to be. If, if, if you can't do it, then just say, no, I can't do it. And don't feel bad about it. It's, it's just, I think that the credibility of Christians needs to be well above the world's credibility. Did you know a Bible dictionary? Okay. It says. At least you didn't go to Google. I, I thought, you, I, I thought you might go to Google. Says, okay. Promise is an agreement or a pledge. A vow is a solemn promise. Solemn <laughs> is defined as deeply earnest or serious. So we have a deeply <laughs> earnest, serious promise. That is an agreement. Yeah. You know, you know, a lot of people, and I, I don't, and, and I certainly don't agree with this, but, you know, it was always, I promise this. No, I will... Swear? <laughs> no, I will. I will I swear. swear that I do that. Remember, uh, people used to say that all the time. You know, and that meant that it was not only a promise that it was a, you know, it had more credibility if you put that word with it. You know, um, didn't say cross my heart and hope to die. Cross my heart and hope to die. That was that. that yep, that's another one. It, it's like. It's like, it's like our yeses can't be yeses and our noes can't be noes. You know what I mean? In other words, it takes the credibility of, away of just saying, yes, I'll do that, or no, I won't do that. Um, but I think what Lafia is saying, though, has a lot of, has a lot of credibility. 
credibility? Yeah, I think it's a very good point. I mean, this, this is why it's so important to look back at the Old Testament through the eyes of Jesus. I mean, vows were a problem. You can say whatever you want. Vows put people in tough spots. You know, and what Jesus is saying is he's saying just, just be honest. Like, don't, don't, don't carry yourself in a way where you have to ensure people that you're telling the truth. Yes. Just, just tell the truth. But, like, I, I, I don't... Like, I don't know what to what to make of this. I mean, I don't know what to make of. I mean, you know, I mean, we make Hannah a hero, and I get that. You know, I mean, I wouldn't do this. I've got no problem sitting here saying I wouldn't do this. I'm not even a woman. I think it would be harder for the moms. I think as, as dads, we're probably you know different on this. I mean, like the child is not living inside of me. The child is not. I mean, like 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 like, like there is bonding that happens that doesn't happen with us necessarily. Like, I, and I wouldn't do this, and I don't think anybody's asking me to do this, frankly. I don't think anybody's asking anybody else to do this. Would you promise, not to give away your child, but would you promise to give that God, give that child, raise that child up in a godly home? To the best of my ability, but you might not think I'm doing that. Well, I'm not, you know, you, you I'm know, not. I mean, somebody else might not think, no, nobody in the room might think I'm doing yeah, that. This is a very objective I mean, thing. That's a yeah. subjective. I don't, no, I don't think that is, but not in the Old Testament. Because considered godly, there was rules that you attended the feast three times a year, that you made the sacrifices. If you're saying that, hey, I'm going to make sure that my child's going to do that. But that's not what she's saying. She's giving it over to the priest. She's giving it over to God. Yeah, that's that's but, above and beyond. But you can't be subjective to, is my household being? I don't, want, I, don't want, I don't want us to criticize Hannah because she was willing to give her child over to God. I, that That's... I want to keep her as a very faithful, fulfilling her promise lady in the Bible. But and, and everyone that had a priest did this. Do I this is, Hannah's not the only person in the history of mankind. Like, like, like this is how, like if someone was going to go and become a priest, uh -huh. like this is what happened. Right. So this right. is not like she's the only one ever doing this. Right. I mean, this is, this is, part, of the, this is part of the deal. But she wasn't in the Levitical tribe. She wasn't in the tribe of Levi. She was in the tribe of Ephraim. Yeah, and I don't know all the rules. Uh, I'm not sure about that. What? I think he came from a town. Her husband came from the town. Read the that first was verse. Over to read, read the first verse in, in First Samuel, please. And I think that you'll, you'll, you'll. I'm reading the first verse. Okay, read it. I'm reading it. Keep it. Keep yeah, going. I, just, I, mean, I don't know what to take away. Samuel to God. <clears throat> I don't. He wasn't a priest. He was a prophet. Right, right. But she, she'd brought him to be raised up by godly men to do that, yes. yes. And we don't really know that much about the, the Nazarite vows. I mean, we know that Samson, and I mean, he's a horrible example of a godly person. But anyway, but we know Samson. He just had a problem with Delilah. He just had a woman problem. Yeah, he was a horrible. <laughs> he, he, he killed a lot of people. Samson was a spoiled he, brat. He, he killed a lot of people. He was horrible. But anyway, we know there's Samson, and we know this. And then there are a couple other people in the Bible that there's that have been thought about as possibly being um, Nazarites as well because they didn't cut their hair. And there were certain rules there that they yeah they, had. they couldn't drink and but then right. Samson drank and yeah. you know and, yeah. but they couldn't have alcohol. Yeah. That kind of stuff. But, um, but she was definitely dedicating her. I, I think that's the point of the story. Child. The fact that she did, she was faithful. She did follow up with her promise. And I, if we want to take something from out of this and, and take it to today, I think that's the key. That she made a promise to God, she followed through with that promise. And that makes her faithful to her promise to God. But in, in the framing of the Old Testament, God, I mean, you just heard it in the comments that you just heard. God becomes synonymous <coughs> with rules. And Jesus is trying to make sure God becomes synonymous with love. And we need to make sure we're, cho we're, we're choosing properly. But you don't, you don't throw the guidelines out the door when you, when you have love. It was the fact that they were not applying the law as God wanted them to apply the law from the so heart. They weren't good enough to follow the rules. I didn't say that. You said that. I didn't say that. Yeah, you're right. I'm asking you. Is that oh. what you mean? They, 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 that so Jesus had to come? No, to there was godly people in the Old Testament. There was godly people. But God brought, God brought a covenant of love. Godly people didn't follow all the rules. 
Yeah, yeah, a lot of, a lot of them did not. Yeah. not. But, and, and we don't follow all the rules today, but because God's blood. That's what, that's, what, that's what Hebrews is about, right? I mean, right, you but, but you cannot throw all the rules out the door with the, the dish, I mean well, the water. You kill yourself if you don't follow them all. That's right. That's where the grace of God comes in. Thank goodness for the Lord Jesus Christ and his blood. Yep. Yep. Yes, Vinny. Rule book. A rule book. There's a rule book. He's, he's holding up the rule book. I totally disagree with that idea. But really? With the idea that the Bible is the rule book? Well, it's the, the, it's, it's the guide. It's the guide. It's, the guide. It, it, it's our guide. Otherwise, we would be wherever we wanted to be according to our, our law. And uh, that, that doesn't work out very good. How is thankfulness vital to our faithfulness? How is thankfulness vital to our faithfulness? One the same. How is thankfulness Should Christians, should God's people be thankful? Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Should, do we have, uh, do we have, um, does thankfulness, uh, how can I say this? Um, do we have a right to be thankful? Should we? If we have been, if we have been, or if we're baptized believers and our sins have been washed away by the grace and mercy that that God has given us, um, and uh, do we can we stand and say uh, that we are justified in being thankful? Maybe justify is a better word than, than, than right. How about that? Well, I think we do. I think we do. Julio? Isn't thankfulness a way of acknowledging our faith with God? That, that uh, the answer or whatever it is that we're seeking or whatever it is that we have is from Him? I believe so. Yes. Yes. Sean? I was pointing to who was agreeing. Oh, you were just pointing. Okay. You, were, you were ignoring him. I was pointing to Melio had an answer. Okay. I think I, I, as I read the story again uh, this week, I, I, just, I just thought I was very impressed with Hannah that she would, was able to do this because, like I said, uh, it, and, and that, and I, and I'll say it again. I think the point is of the lesson is, if if you make promises, try your very best to keep them. Uh, if you, um, and we have made promises. We've made promises to God before, and uh, we we need to try very very hard to uh, keep those promises because hey, it shows our faithfulness. Yes. Just, Philip made this point in my ear, but I'm going to make the point to you in that you know. Her husband could have completely just like said no, and it, that would have completely taken her out of the game. Did that catch your attention? That he didn't say he just let her go. Let, 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 I mean, it was just this yeah. is the way it was going to be. I thought he said, that do, do what you want to do. Yeah. I think she. I think she did. I, I, that kind of caught my attention, but I didn't want to. Is, is there a difference well, in making a promise to? Someone around you and making a promise to God? I'd say it would be a lot more serious when it was to God. I, I, that's, I mean, but yet Jesus tells us, you know, that we need to treat other people with, with, uh, with assuredness. Yeses and yeses and noes and noes. All right. What'd you say, Ginger? 
the only reason she was able to do this is because of her her love, her trust, her faithfulness in God. The relationship that she had with him is why she could do this. I think chapter 2 kind of tells that when she prays. And she really acknowledges everything that God is to her.